Back in 2015, when SpaceX made its first successful landing, going to Mars was still a big question mark. However, now that the final test of the Starship is happening and we can clearly see what it looks like, one cannot help but wonder what the interior of the ship is going to be like. So only in today's episode of Alpha Tech, let's find out what Elon Musk revealed about Starship's interior design. And it's more important than you think. A critical element of planning human missions to Mars involves life support systems. The requirement for air, food, water, and waste disposal materials in human missions to Mars total well over 100 metric tons, and possibly as much as 200 metric tons. Translated back into an equivalent mass required in low Earth orbit, this figure would increase by at least a factor of seven, depending on mission architecture requiring at least half dozen heavy lift launches solely for life support and thus driving the cost and complexity of human missions to Mars beyond any reasonable limit. Previous design reference missions assumed that high-performance life support systems would function flawlessly for the approximately 2.7-year round trip to Mars. However, life support systems developed for the International Space Station do not appear to have the longevity and reliability needed for Mars. Now, as NASA and SpaceX move forward with the current Human Exploration Initiative, we need some means of estimating the required mass of life support systems that goes beyond wild, optimistic guesses. Starship flights carrying the first humans to Mars are optimally planned for the Mars launch window after the launch of the first two or more uncrewed Starship vehicles. Therefore, upon human arrival on Mars, there will already be at least two cargo Starships on the surface. The second wave of missions could include two starships carrying crew plus additional uncrewed and cargo starships. The human starships will have on the order of 1,100 square meters forward space, most of which is pressurized for human habitation, 28, 30, and 800 cubic meter LOX tank, and a 600 cubic meter methane tank with a stainless steel primary structure. The LOX and methane tanks could later become pressurized living spaces on the surface of Mars. Scientists recommended that these first crewed starships each have about 10 to 20 total people on board with an additional 100 plus metric tons of available cargo mass per starship. Cargo carried on these flights will necessarily include additional equipment required for human health and productivity during the transit to Mars and on the Martian surface. These vehicles will also carry fully operational hardware needed to support the human Mars base, which is likely to include equipment for power production, water extraction, pre-prepared landing pads, radiation shielding, dust control equipment, and exterior shelters for humans and equipment. Humans will likely live on Starship for the first few years on Mars until additional habitats are constructed, so the radiation risk must be assessed and mitigated accordingly and equipment plan to support this initial infrastructure. The first wave of uncrewed Starship vehicles can also be relocated and or repurposed as needed to support the people on the surface. These vehicles will be valuable assets for storage, habitation, and as a source of refined metal and components. Musk has addressed life support and human health in his Starship talks, but only briefly. In his most recent presentation, the SpaceX CEO was asked about the interior design for the crewed Starship. We, we, have, we aren't focusing a lot on the interior quite yet, I and mean, that will be important down the road, but uh, our focus right now is just getting to orbit and proving out uh, return of the booster and return of the ship. Previously, Musk also said, I don't think it's actually super hard to do that relative to the spacecraft itself, Musk said. The life support system is pretty straightforward. In fact, SpaceX already has some experience with life support systems with its new crew capsule called Crew Dragon, which is designed to take astronauts to the International Space Station. However, providing life support for a short trip to orbit is much different than one that's needed to keep people alive for weeks and months in deep space. Musk did say that the life support systems on Starship would be regenerative, but life support systems tend to be heavy and complex, changing how the vehicle would operate. And figuring out how to keep people safe in emergency situations is also key. There are also many other questions that must be addressed. For one thing, experts don't know if humans can live and be healthy at the low gravity environment of the moon. Our bones and muscles are accustomed to Earth's gravity, 
that these tissues might deteriorate more quickly on the moon, which has one-sixth the gravity of our planet. Exercise could mitigate that, but researchers ultimately don't know if that would be enough or what kind of equipment is needed. There's also just the basic comfort of people to think about. Design decisions like lighting, the angle of chairs during launch, it can all have an impact on how people feel and behave. Musk has talked about sending 100 people up in Starship, with each person getting about 10 cubic meters of space. Especially in like a zero-G situation, that's actually a lot of room, claims Musk. But that may turn out to not be enough in the grand scheme of things, negatively affecting people's mental state. The behavioral aspects are a major concern and you can't always predict how people are going to react being so far away from Earth without direct communication, says Donneville, the director for Translational Research Institute for Space Health, which is partnered with NASA. These problems are really just the tip of the iceberg too. So much more will need to be addressed just to start a lunar base, let alone send people to Mars indefinitely. Ultimately, SpaceX can opt to tackle these problems once Starship development's complete, but that will prolong when people will actually get to fly to the moon or on Starship at all. When we try to engage the commercial spaceflight companies on thinking about the humans, and they're just not there yet, says Donneville. They're still trying to solve the big problems on how to get them there. So we come to why Elon Musk skip Starship interior design at this moment. Actually, with SpaceX now, the first orbital flight still has a big hurdle hardware for flight and even legal difficulties. You know, they definitely prove it's getting orbital ability first and then. Yeah. It, it's, it's fundamentally very difficult to build a fully reusable rocket uh, given the strength of Earth's gravity and the density of our atmosphere. Um, like there's no, you, you can't have a, a lot of uh, mass margin. Um, so our focus is, is solving that rapid reusability Building reusable rockets like Musk is focused on at SpaceX is incredibly hard. For a rocket to be reusable, it must be able to slow from nearly 3,000 miles per hour to a safe landing speed and nail a bullseye landing. But these types of problems have a clear potential for a sustainable competitive advantage if you can solve the problem. A long stream of research by our colleagues and others suggests that a commitment to reaching critical scale and overcoming complexity can serve as sustainable sources of competitive advantage. But solving these problems is not for the faint of heart. It requires taking big bets. So be patient with Elon Musk. He's taking it step by step to make humans truly multiplanetary. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section down below. Your support is motivation for us to create more quality content. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you next time.